Hey YouTube, I'm Drunken Headshot. I stream on Twitch five days a week. You can catch me while I'm streaming on Twitch. You just check down that description down below. You can hop in my stream and say hello sometime. Uh, other than that, I'm gonna give you 10 solid tips for if you're a beginner to Diablo 3. These things are gonna help you. Um, so let's just get right into it. First tip guys, I wanna get you the Kanias Cube. You'll, I'll talk about what this does a little bit later, but you can do this at the lowest difficulty. It doesn't have to be at the highest difficulty, but I would suggest if you're just starting off in the game, you can do this. You don't need any gear. All you do is just set it down to normal. You can just jump right in. So once you're in your game, you want to go to this portal thing and uh, go to Act 3, Bastion's Keep. Go over here to Runes of Shishiron. And you're gonna make it your way all the way through from one side to the other. So once you get to the end of the map, all the way through the end of after Runes of Sharon, you make your way to Elder to Elder Sanctum, and then you're going to walk all the way to the right side of the map. It's always going to be here on the right side of the map. There's going to be a hole in the wall. You just walk through this hole, click this cube, and you've got Kanai's cube. This Kanai's cube is very, very important. So this cube will allow you to 10 recipes that you can see and look at all these recipes. We can get into the recipes later, but the first recipe is the most important. Reforge, no sorry, uh, extract the legendary power. This one will allow you to take a legendary item, any legendary item, such as the Nemesis Bracers here. I put this in, I fill it up with these bounty mats, which I'll talk about in a sec, and plus some uh, Death's Breath and then I transmute. Once I do that, since I've already done it, uh, I have it extracted already, but you'll see that Nem Bracers are in the cube. One, if I were to use it like this, I would no longer have to wear the Nemesis Bracers because I already have, I would have the power given to me from Kanai's cube. We're gonna get into some bounty mats, guys. I'm gonna show you how to get those bounty mats that I use to extract that legendary power. The way I did it was with these bounty mats. You'll see the cache right here. If I already complete all of these bounties with the exclamation marks on them, I would get this bounty cache. Now, I'd only get the Act 3 bounty cache if I already complete this one. You can see that all five acts have bounty caches that you can be rewarded for completing these bounties. So, be highly suggestive to get a team together and do those bounty mats but you can do them by yourself but there is an easy way which is the challenge rift so the challenge rift is pretty simple all you got to do is click the game settings and you'll see challenge rift right here it resets every Monday and if you do this challenge rift you'll be rewarded this challenge rift cache which gives you a bunch of bounty mats as well as some death's breath and some blood shards the next quick tip I'm going to give you is to level up your artisans. So you have the blacksmith here, you have the gym, uh, the jeweler over here, right? And you have your enchantress over here. So the you would go to train and there would be a level up button and you want to level this up max on all three of them as soon as you can. Uh, you'll see that each of them, as you level them up, will be increasing, increasingly more costly as well as require some death spread. So my next tip is how to get the 70 and maybe get some Paragon as well. First, we're going to get the 70. You can either do that tradition, the traditional way and level up on your own and increase the difficulty as your gear gets better. Or you could also go to the Season Power Leveling Community if you don't know how to join communities. You can find communities down here. You can, If it doesn't pop up right away, you can just type in Season here on the filter. Boom. Join it. And then once you do that, you go over here, click this little chat box. It'll pop up. And you can see it. And I'll move the webcam for you. It'll pop up right there and you just say looking for power level to 
70. Boom. Once you do that, I'm not I'm not going to be looking for a power level at the moment, but that's exactly what you would do. And maybe you'll get somebody to reach out and help give you a hand and get you to 70. As soon as you're 70, maybe they can help you get some gear. If you want some more tips on how to get how to make friends and expand your community and, and get groups and get gear and blue share. Go ahead and check out my other video. I'll put it down in the description down below as well. It's one of my other videos. It's how to make friends in Diablo 3. So my next tip for you is how to get a build. And you would really want to know, you want to know what direction you want to go with your build and what with your class, with your character, what kind of damage you want to do, or if you want to play a support role in groups. If you want to know these things, you need to be looking either at Diablo fans, and I'm still I'm gonna get a little bit of a rep, rep for this, but I would say a little bit of icy veins as well. And the reason I say icy veins is because it's a good beginner's guide to get your feet wet. So if you're on, if you've never seen this game before, Diablo fans might be a little bit confusing, and so will icy veins. But there's there's a lot that both offer. So first, we're going to start off with Diablo fans. It might be a little bit confusing right when you look at it. But this is just a filter up here at the top. And what I would say is you want to, if you're playing Barbarian, let's say, we're gonna highlight the Barbarian here. If we're playing Seasonal, we definitely want to put here Seasonal for build type. And then I would just I would just go ahead and click that filter button and then boom, you have nothing but Barbarian guides right here. The same can work for any of these others. For Diablo fans, it's about, it's a little bit different here. If you're playing, let's say, Barbarian, we'll go ahead and go with that again. Uh, you can see that there's a Hammer of Ancients build here. There's a support build, the Raker set, uh, Furious Charge. If you click on any of these, let's say you want to play the support build, right? we'll click on the support build with the Raker set. Now, a lot of this is going to be pretty accurate, but there is going to be some changes in the game, and then those changes may not be updated on this right away. So I would always suggest for in-game stuff, for the most up-to-date, you want to go to Diablo, Diablo fans, and that has some really good, uh, really good guides posted by some uh, reputable players in the game. So once you're done completing a rift, or maybe you're in the map killing things and you get some items, you want to go over to the Book of Cain. You want to identify the items that you've got. Uh, once and this book of Cain will identify everything it wants. Sometimes it'll give you your class. Sometimes it'll give, give you other stuff. What I'm doing right now is salvaging my stuff. This is what you want to do. Uh, pretty much all the time you want to salvage. Break down the the yellow items, the blue items. You're going to get these mats right here, the crafting mats, and you can use those for uh, for many things. And we'll get into that in just a second here. Uh, for anything that I'm not going to use for that build we were just talking about, I'm just going to go ahead and salvage. I'm not going to use this, this, uh, that is for Necromancer. I'm not using that. I'm going to go ahead and salvage that. But maybe I want to keep that Oculus ring, so I might just keep the Oculus ring. So, but, and if you want to save any items, you can go ahead over here to your stash, pick the tab that you want to save, and go ahead and save those items. Next tip I'd like to cover is stat prioritization. You want to make sure that your rolling stats, and we'll, I'll get into it in just a second, is you want to have the right stats on your gear. Now if you look on those build guides that we talked about earlier, uh, they'll have some stat prioritizations on them. You'll know which stats you want to prioritize. If you have any questions, you could always ask other players in the game who you think might know and they might be able to toss you some advice. So the we're going to go over here to the Enchant, Enchant Artisan, and we're going to go on the first tab. I'm going to go ahead and roll some more DPS stats on my Firebird's Talons here. So I want crit chance, area damage, and I want to roll crit damage on these. So you can see if you click this question mark, it'll show you what the possibilities are. What I want to do is go for the crit damage, and we're gonna to try to get as high as we possibly can. For the, you can see we have primary and secondary, and you will most likely 
prioritize the primary in almost all cases, unless you're playing a support class or maybe a thorns class. But we're going to we're going to prioritize the primary in this case, and like I said, in most cases you're going to prioritize the primary. So let's try and roll for some crit damage and see what we get. And you can see it's random every time. It's going to have RNG is going to play a huge role in this, but hopefully we get crit damage. And you see 47% right there. And now I have Firebird's Talons with crit chance, crit damage, and area damage. And one thing I would strongly suggest here, and it isn't, it isn't really in the, in the build guide, but uh, try to get over 50% crit chance, and you can see I'm not, but I can still do that with this build. But in most cases, you want to try to get over 50% crit chance as like a rule of thumb. You want to hit at least one out of every two targets with that crit. So there you go, and that would be rolling stats. The next thing we're going to get into is Nephilim Rifts and Greater Rifts, what the difference is. You'll see right here, when you complete a Nephilim Rift, you'll get a Greater Rift Keystone. The Nephilim Rift, all the enemies drop gold, or they, they have the ability to drop gold, they drop gear, anything can drop while you're killing these things. It's just like going out into the open world and killing things. But, at the end of the Nephilim Rift, you'll see a timer, at the end of it, a Rift Guardian will spawn, and once you kill that boss, you'll have a chance uh, at a certain amount of keys, depending on the difficulty that you fight, and you'll get these Greater Rift Keystones. Once you get at least one of these Keystones, you can open up a Greater Rift, you'll see the option of these levels in which you want to complete. And once you complete these Greater Rifts, at the end of it, you'll have another Rift Guardian, which will drop a bunch of gear, and depending on your difficulty, maybe more or less of the legendaries, hopefully getting you the gear that you need. Also, it drops a legendary gem, which you can see I have gems inside of my gear here. Bane of the Powerful, Boon of the Hoarder, and Bane of the Trap. Boon of the Hoarder, I don't believe drops inside the Greater Rifts, but drops inside the Vault, which maybe you can research that on your own. But Bane of the Trapped, and Bane of the Powerful, they both drop as well, and a bunch of other legendary gems, which I could actually show you. A um, bunch of other legendary gems, and they have all their own abilities, and once you, at the end of the Greater Rift, you get to level these up, and at level 25, or rank 25, I should say, uh, they gain a secondary effect, which are really good. So, next thing I want to talk about is your seasonal journey. You can get free gear if you complete these seasonal objectives. You can see chapter 1 through 4, and um, on this, you can see if you complete this, you get the full set, depending on the season that you're playing. Now, granted, this only works in seasonal on a seasonal character, but if you complete these objectives before the end of the season, you'll get a full set of gear with each chapter that you complete. And by the end of it, you'll get, a, uh, you'll get the seasonal rewards, the other seasonal rewards. If you complete all the way up to, I believe, let's see, which one is it? Conqueror, you'll get an extra stash tab as well. So go ahead and do those seasonal journeys uh, seasonal objectives as quick as possible and get that free gear. The last tip I have for you is how to spend your blood shards. This little bitch right here. Well, okay, so Kadala, she is the one you you spend all your blood shards on. And she charges a lot for some stupid stuff. But what I would say is go to armor here. Each of them costs 25 blood shards. And you want to go ahead and just buy what you're looking for. She's going to give you possibilities for legendary. She's going to give you some rares and some blues. And hopefully you get some good. So that was your 10 tips guys. I got one more little tip for you. Um, if you go on twitch.tv, go into the Diablo 3 directory, there are some people there and some streamers there that are willing to help you if you have any questions and you get to watch the gameplay of the classes and builds and 
you know, everything else that you might be interested in this game. This game is great. I hope you enjoy it and I hope this video is informative. Go ahead and feel free to check out my Twitch anytime I'm online and I'd be happy to have you there. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Thank you.